Hello everyone and welcome back to Two Bros Game Night. I am your host, Older Bro. I'm your other host, Shinger Bro. And today we continue in uh, Lily of the Valley. Yeah, Lily of the Valley. Yeah, Valerie. Alright, when I graduated from university with my 2.1 in English. Hold on, then... no, 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 no. It was a 2.1 in everything. Yeah, if he graduated with a 2.1. That he, one, that's in everything. Yeah, it's like 2.1 is your average across all classes. You might have done well in English, but you might have done shit and everything else. Like 2. Point, what did you but get perfectly 2.1 in every single thing? In everything, yeah. That's that's literally impossible. But okay. Yeah. Right. That's like one in a million chance to get that. I got perfect mediocre grades in literally every class. I didn't know what to do. English is, of course, a reasonably un useless. Uh, is a reasonably useless subject. It's not like medicine or dentistry. Dentistry, where you're almost guaranteed a job. One company in the real world is going to hire me, well, someone who uh, is desperate. <laughs> because I once wrote a particularly good essay about Freudian Freudian symbolism in Hamlet. Not very many. Let me tell Let's you. see. How about any magazine, newspaper, yeah, how about a editorial, class? English teacher? Even so, I didn't want to go back home after growing accustomed to life in London. As uncomfortably busy and sometimes overwhelming, bleh, overwhelming. overwhelming as it could be, I didn't want to return to Wales. What? Wet Wales, where it's always rain. That is, I'm sorry, again, you misspoke. It's not Wales where it's always raining, it's the entire fucking UK island where it's always raining. It's always raining in London, too! <laughs> If I couldn't get a job in London, what kind of job would I be able to get back in my small village? It's practically a ghost town there. Worse even. Not even the ghosts were made. <laughs> That's pretty good. This village is so out of the way. There are never even... Uh, there are never enough board... Teenagers to spray graffiti on the gravestones or knock them over. Who does that? Who does graffiti on gravestones? I've never bored heard teenagers of that, who but... are uh, rude as fuck. Anyway, our poor spokes have spooks. spooks have nothing to do, nobody to haunt. All they can do is rot underneath the earth, forlorn and forgotten. But yeah, I've never heard anybody graffitiing gravestones. That's a first. Yeah, apparently the UK sucks. Going back would be too stagnating. Going back would be giving up. Going back would be the same as admitting failure. This utter failure of a official novel. <laughs> no, no, no. I wouldn't quite call it nah. an utter failure. Nah. It's got to have some love if the game was drastically right. like redesigned. Again, we but haven't even gotten to the game yet. What 21-year-old wants to... Ugh, anyway, wants to live with their parents anyway. How about maybe none of them, but none. how many 21-year-olds need to live with their parents or they starve? Quite a few. So I applied for jobs. I applied for several jobs within a few weeks. Anyway, I heard back from an insurance company they invited me to an interview i went and i passed and i got a job lucky me working at the phones in an insurance company nine until five monday to friday in a suit and tie just like a proper adult why the fuck do you need to wear a suit and tie at a fucking insurance company as a receptionist and as long as i got my suit and tie um i i i mm, I don't know, maybe it's a... Like, what the hell? Like a dress code of sorts. Yeah, but I'm saying, why would you need one? Nobody's nobody's gonna look at you. You're answering the phones for an insurance company. That's a good question. It wasn't a 
great job. I didn't assume I'd be sticking around for too long. And yet I've been here for 20 years. <laughs> I saw it as a stepping stone in my journey, a stopgap, a necessary... A necessity. A necessity until I could secure a better, more well-paying position. And then I gave up on that. A job where people didn't complain at me incessantly over the phone saying I was worse than Hitler because their no claims discount was now void would have been nice. I, yeah, I feel like this guy definitely like. I mean, I think that here, here's stuff. the thing. Here's the thing. I don't agree with these people. I don't think that you're the scum of the earth because their no claims discount is now void. I think you're scum of the earth because you work in insurance. Insurance is absolutely horrible. You know, what other job is it where you get hit by a car and now you have to pay more money because you did nothing wrong? That's why these people are pissed off. It's not because, oh, I didn't file a claim. It's because someone else hit me and now I'm being forced to pay more money for my insurance when I'm not at fault, you fucking assholes. <laughs> Save 15% or more car insurance. By switching to <clears throat> fuck you. A job where my workmates didn't keep making dis disparaging disparaging remarks about Welsh people and sheep would have also been appreciated, but I knew not to get my hopes up. Let's be honest, there are no Welsh people. There are English people and rural English people. No matter where you go, people act like arses. <laughs> That's one thing that never changes. Well, hey, if you'd rather if you'd rather be in a situation where you uh call out people for being assholes, uh you can try to apply to Two Bros game night. I don't promise you a job. <laughs> and yet though, I told myself my job was a temporary thing, hardly something I could commit to for my whole life. Before I knew it, more than 10 years had gone by and nothing had changed. I still work in the same office with mostly the same people doing the same hours for the same pay and they still haven't stopped making jokes about shit. Then how about you look for a different fucking job? Who knows, maybe he has. You'd think they'd get tired of that eventually. Evidently not. People are oddly tenacious about the stupidest of things. Now that, that's a tagline for Two Bros Game Night. <laughs> oddly tenacious about the stupidest of things. <laughs> like criticizing this entire visual novel. <laughs> or, or continuing to play something despite the fact that no one has joy in it. Uh, or just getting pissed off about something. I still hadn't haven't managed to take the next step. My progress in the journey of life has been put on an indefinite hiatus. This roadblock is far too large for me to shift. You think it would be easy to find a job in London, given how big it is, but it, it's not easy to find a job anywhere. Let, let's yeah. just make that frank. Let's make let's make that clear. After the recent economic downturn... Which one? Which one, yeah. <laughs> I don't fancy my changes. I don't want to quit my job, no matter how draining, without the security of a new job offered to support me. I still haven't been able to find a new job. See, he just hasn't been able to find one. Maybe I haven't been looking hard enough. No, you might have. So that's that. I'm stuck. Stuck in the same place I've been for the last 13 years. Going nowhere. Doing nothing. Floundering. Also, a uh, tagline for Two Bros Game Night. <laughs> going nowhere. Doing nothing. Floundering. <laughs> I need to start taking photos of these. It must be going somewhere since our sub kids going up. No, that's but... other people going somewhere. <laughs> And then they eventually leave and makes our sub cap go down. <laughs> that is the way of the world. Con Two growth game. and then decline. Two does game night. You sub to them and then go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm sad. Let, let's let's move on to something that's also sad. Let's just, just keep reading the lines, please. This entire visual novel is sad. Yeah, please, please read more lines. Sometimes I have to wonder what the point is. We're all going to die anyway. Uh, there's got to be this some joy in here somewhere. Depression. 
This entire game is depression. Was that the chapter? Yep. That was the chapter. <laughs> Stasis. What's X? Ten. Ten? Ahem. <clears throat> Ah, oh, yes, I remember Rosie like it was only yesterday, says Green Ant. And then Enid. Her voice falters as though she's speaking through a mouthful of salt. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. No shit. It's hard to make yourself understood. Yeah. I'm not too sure about that. A lot. Yeah, it's, that's true for a lot of people. Like, I, my grandpa is the only one that it's hard to make sense around, but all my other grandparents have spoken pretty clearly. Or maybe people just don't know what to don't understand want. you, don't want to understand you anymore. That's also true. Um, we used to spend so much time together, me and her. Of course we had to. It wasn't necessarily through choice, she continues. Ah, uh, that's nice, Annie, says, mm, says Hazel politely, but I don't think great Aunt Enid. Enid is listening. She never does. Then again, most people don't listen to her. I know, I rarely do. Well, hold on. Is that a great aunt Edith or to Hazel? <laughs> <laughs> Usually both. Yes, yes, she continues. She was a pretty thing back in those days. Oh, such a long time ago. I used to be so jealous of her. <laughs> I remember her hubby to be bought. Oh, hubby to be Bought her a dress, a beautiful dress, navy blue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 I I thought that was her wedding gown for a second. I was like, I mean, there are many people who would say sure to that as well. Yeah, that's fair. Like, bride doesn't need to wear white. Yeah, that's true. Also, let's be honest, most brides aren't pure anyways. So, I never seen anything so expensive in my life. Uh, that's nice, Annie. I don't remember the voice I gave it, so that's why I'm doing that voice. Yes, it was a beautiful dress. I would have given my own front teeth for something like that. Oh, is that why you have dentures? Um, of course, I was younger than Rosie, and no man would spend so much money on a 12-year-old girl. Oh, old. Uh, 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 no, no, no. Uh, I, I, I regret to inform you that there are many men who would spend a lot of money for a 12-year-old girl. We don't talk about those men. They go to jail. I mean, even 12-year-old boys would do stupid things for... Not spend that much money, though. <laughs> but still. Hey, they could have been rich. They could have been born rich. They could have done whatever they want. In Wales? Why not? Yeah, you know, the sheep farming community. Very rich sheep farmer. Maybe her, maybe she wanted to marry Sahasara. To be fair, we don't know the entire population of Wales. There could be rich people living there. Uh, yeah, but probably not in this rural village. I had to make do with Rosie's hand-me-downs. My mother could afford to buy me anything new, you see. I see, says Hazel. I don't know if she really does see, but I doubt Great Aunt Enid cares or can see either. I still remember one of the dresses I had. Well, it was Rosie's first, naturally. Pale green with white spots. It was sparkled, sorry, speckled like an egg. I always called it my Easter dress. I mean, if it's got eggs on it, I can see sure. why. And then one day I caught it on something. I don't know what, a gate maybe? How sad. It, oh, how sad. It was. I was only going for walks in f the fields. Not much else you could do back in those days. 
Unless you could drive a car, and I was too young. My mother never learned it was too expensive anyway. Yes, yeah, Santy? Oh, I was sad when I ripped that dress, though. It was such a pretty dress, even though it was only the only dress I had. It was second hand. I cried and cried until my mother lost her temper and hit me with the slipper. I can still remember that, too. I can't Donk. imagine. Yes, Auntie? And then mm, I wonder. Was it, Annie? Granette, eating it, pauses. She frowns, her light blue eyes so misted over from age they look like cloudy mirrors staring off yep staring off continuously into the distance sorry questioningly into the distance her brows furrow her whole face wrinkled like an overripe tomato i mean <laughs> yeah you thought the chapter ended didn't you great I, aunt I, I was must wondering. be getting on in the years now She's the sister of my mother's mother, Rose. Grandma Rose died when I was only four years old, my first funeral. And Enid must be in her mind mid 80s now. Her body betrays her age, <clears throat> her hands gripping the armrests of her chair are lined with dark blue veins ridged under her marked skin her whole face sags especially around the mouth and eyes her hair is stark white and thin her start startlingly startlingly pink scalp exposed when she stands her back is humped and she has to use a walking stick I feel like he's explaining Aunt eat it late but i'm not i'm not sure yeah it feels like this should have came before the talking to eat yeah eat it, but whatever she must be tougher than she looks even in her old age she's able to live in her own home by herself without anybody to look after her. my dad is called called it sorry my dad called it tenacity tenacity but my mother laughed and said she was just stubborn. That's what he just said. Those things are not different. This and stubborn? Yeah, I'm just like, those are pretty much identical words. Like, just... <clears throat> well, it's not... It's not the dad saying that. It's uh, the mother saying that she was just stubborn by that... So what you're saying yes, is... Yes, but I'm saying the tenacity. definition of tenacity is extremely persistent and adhering to or doing something. Stubborn or relentless. So, Literally, it's tenacity is just a synonym for stubborn. My dad called her stubborn, but my mother laughed and said she was stubborn. Fucking same thing. Well, maybe the father just knows better vocabulary than the Yeah, clearly. Great Aunt Enid was crying at my mother's funeral just a few days ago. She looks fine now, right as rain. Her words drench us in a deluge, a, a de yeah, deluge. Yeah, deluge. A veritable downpour, quite literally. Sometimes she gets overexcited in her reminiscence. Reminiscence. And she spits while she speaks i don't think she knows she's doing it but she is There's too many sh hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. guys uh writers writers i want you to look at this sentence right here just just this paragraph of sentence notice how many times the sh word she appears she 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 is six she's cut some she's out of this sentence too much repetition so, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of 
repetition because I can see she. It's like I, I get too. that she obviously is gonna be a word. Like I and she and me and you are gonna be words that are used a lot. It's understandable, but sometimes you have to write your sentences differently to remove too many overused words. Yeah, plus especially when you put she three times in one sentence and then three times in a, the sentence right before. Plus, I feel like they over-explain things uh, occasionally. Uh, she sometimes pauses in her monologues to give Hazel or me to give Hazel or me room for input. Oh, okay, but she never takes our comments seriously. She doesn't care what we have to say. I doubt she even listens. I could insult her. She. I could insult her. Say her head looks like a gourd. Yep. Which it is, and she'd only nod benignly, benignly, and say, "That's nice, dear." I shift slightly in my seat, nursing a cu cup of tea in my hand. It's already gone cold. Granny Enid offered to make us tea. My father tried to decline politely, asking if he could make the tea in her stead, but Great Aunt Enid refused. She said it was her duty as our hostess to serve us, <laughs> not the other way around. Incredible! Anyway, like... Uh, yeah, this would, be, this would be Great Aunt Enid. Incredible! I guess I see to make his own tea. It's just not done. What is this world coming to? To be honest, I'd rather risk the frightening new world of disorder and chaos if it meant I could avoid Great Aunt Enid's tea. And that's the gamble that got us into the current situation that we're in. It's discolored, mixed with far too much milk, so it looks like brown, almost tan. Oh, it looks light brown, almost tan. I don't know if the milk used is of the highest quality either. Or even Small of good quality. White flakes float up to the surface of the tea, drifting like sunburnt sunbathers in a pool. Ugh. I think the milk has gone off. The tea tastes sharp on the tongue, unpleasantly acidic. acidic. My stomach gurgles, I can't finish this. <clears throat> Hazel looks Similarly, per perturbed. Perturbed. Great Aunt Enid. Here's the thing, guys. You did go you did good on trying to come up with the new unique ways to say things. That's that's okay. But you put a bit too much focus into that, and not enough focus into the story. Into well, making the story interesting, <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, some other editing errors. Great Aunt Enid offered her a pink wafer biscuit to go with her tea but her tea is biscuit the biscuit is sorry but the biscuit is uh desiccated <clears throat> desiccated and dried out when hazel this is not even that bit hard of a word tentatively tentatively puts the biscuit between her teeth it crumbles into a fine pink powder ugh how long have those wafer biscuits been jammed at the back of the cupboard? How long has this milk been in the fridge? Maybe to grant Aunt Enid, time really has stopped. She exists in a strange stasis, encased in amber. We only could hope. <laughs> Welcome to Big Ass Amber Ant Parks. We don't uh, need Aunt Enid Park. Though she's surrounded by the living, all... She ever talks about our ghosts. There are ghosts in this house. Uh, I remember where I was, Grant. Says Grant, ain't it, with a nod of her turtle-like head. I thought you said she looked like a gourd. Yeah. Why is it a turtle now? Hazel attempts a smile. What happened next? Now let me see. Grant Enid sits her own cup of tea back on the saucer. 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 It's the the plate piece that you put on her cups. Yes, yes. Yeah. She didn't actually drink any of it, did she? 
Maybe it's just for show a prop. Rosie's Rosie's dress. It really was a lovely dress. Navy blue, very smart. I wanted a dress like that, but being too young to attract a suitable bow, bow, bow. bow I couldn't fi finance my desires. You were 12. What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> yes, Aneenan? All of my clothes were second hand. Second hand me downs. I never got to wear any. Ah, uh, yes, the point where the dialogue tree just uh, yeah. cycles because she's old. And I must say, I was somewhat jealous. Of course, it's understandable, given our mother didn't make so much money, but all the time. She laughed, shaking her head. I worry if she moves too quickly, all <laughs> her thin hair would fall out. Valid. Uh, Valid. True. Children will be children, you know. I was nothing. Something. I was something of a stepping girl. Yeah, I can't imagine. My mother always scolded me about it, but that's just in my nature. Well, I outlived her, and I outlived you too. <laughs> that's why Grant Aunt Edith has been able to live alone for so long. Stubbornness. My mother really was right. Yep. I was so upset about this pretty dress that Rosie had. Well, I'm ashamed of it now. And yet you've said it three it times is now. It's quite a funny story, I think. Um, of course, Rosie didn't find it funny at times. She was so angry with me. My mother hit me with a slipper then, too. I probably deserved it, though. Probably. <laughs> Oh, but thinking of Rosie's face when she found that dress, the dress she loved so much that Lynn had bought her, all cupped up on our head, done yeah. with my mother's sewing scissors. That's something I never forgotten, even to this day. Being a bitch. It really was a priceless moment. But it ain't it, says Hazel. She looks troubled, her grip on... Her cold cup of tea tightens. <laughs> Granite Enid blinks. She looks like a sleepwalker who's just been woken up. Did she forget that we're here? Maybe she got so caught up in her memory she started to think for a few moments she was talking to Grandma Rose again. <laughs> Maybe. Could be. Uh... My god, guys, this uh, dialogue is taking so long to get through because it is just... Uh, yeah, I think it is at, overwhelmingly obtuse. Yeah, we are at time, but do you yeah. want to continue? No. no. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. We will come back next time and continue on in this pain of an ass of a chapter uh, of... Lily of the Valley. Oh, Until Lily. then, the future is very uncertain. What is certain is you guys are awesome, and there'll be more Two Bros Game Night tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>